iPhone 15 Pro Max versus Google Pixel 8 Pro – the big camera comparison. Let's go! Everybody wants to know the differences in cameras in new flagship phones, so let's get into the comparison. But before we start guys, let me show you all the specs of the Google Pixel cameras. All three camera modules got 50 megapixel sensors and they have pretty bright apertures as well, and it's an important factor. So let's start off with the ultra-wide cameras, Google Pixel on the left, iPhone on the right. The Pixel has a bit wider focal length, around 11mm full-frame equivalent compared to 13mm on the iPhone, and straight away I can only tell the difference in terms of white balance. The Pixel did a better job in this photo, but all in all, the image quality is really close and comparable. One more ultra-wide shot, guys, and here you can see how wide the ultra-wide camera is. I even had some part of my finger in this bottom part of the image. But all in all, aside from white balance, I do like both images. The white balance of the pixel seems to be better and more natural. And to really see the difference, guys, we have to zoom in five times. And in this case, I can hardly tell any difference. Maybe iPhone has just slightly better detail, but it's really negligible. And keep in mind, guys, that we're still shooting in 12 megapixel mode, so the standard mode, no 50 megapixels yet. So we have pixel bidding on the pixels from 48 approximately megapixels, we go down to 12. And here is the 50 megapixel shot on the Google Pixel, pixel pixel, a lot of pixels here, and straight away I cannot tell the difference between 50 and 12 megapixels when we're looking at those images side by side in this full frame mode, let me say. I can see a little bit more over sharpening on the iPhone going on and more detail on the pixel, but we have to punch in to really see the difference. Here we are guys, and now I can really tell the difference between those two images, now the pixel has much more detail and less over sharpening. So yes, the 50 megapixel mode on the ultra wide does give you a better image, more detailed image, but still guys, you have to hold the phone really still, like this. You take a picture, you wait for a couple of seconds, then it renders the image, so it's not the fastest way to take pictures. You can just go all over the place taking pictures with 50 megapixels cameras, both in ultra-wide, wide camera, telephoto camera, doesn't matter. It takes some time to actually process the image and you have to be holding the phone still and you need a lot of light, of course. And right here we have the One X camera on both phones. So here we have 12 megapixels on the Pixel and 24 megapixels on the iPhone because right now on One X camera we're getting a stock 24 megapixel image from the iPhone, which is nice. Right here I can definitely tell that the Pixel has more over sharpening around my hair and also the contrast of this image is really high. But also the blacks do look better on the Pixel and the white balance is closer to real life on the iPhone. It was the sunset time so it was more warm towards my skin tone. And all in all you can see the background blur, the natural background blur that you get, optical background blur if you will. And I do like both of those. Let's have a closer look and here you can see the difference between 12 and 24 megapixels. So the Pixel has more over sharpening as I said before and the iPhone has more detail. So in this regard I do prefer the iPhone's footage. I mean the image. One more example with the main camera, 12 megapixel versus 24. And in this case I also do prefer the white balance of the Pixel. It wasn't that cold like on the iPhone. It wasn't that cool let me say. But the overall detail is better on the iPhone, as you can see from this example. So the 24 megapixel is a win for the iPhone. And the next example, once again, 12 megapixels versus 24. And we have a better white balance on the iPhone this time, because it wasn't that cool as on the Pixel. So the white balance is going all over the place on those two smartphones. So it's not a major thing to consider when you're picking one of those two smartphones. And in terms of resolution, when we zoom in five times, you can definitely tell that the 24 megapixel is sharper and more detailed iPhone 15 Pro Max can also shoot in 48 megapixels. Actually, Pixel says that it's 50 megapixel, but I think it's 48 megapixels. You just simply don't use the like pixels on the edge, but it doesn't really matter. So here I have two photos, 50 megapixel on the Pixel and 48 megapixel HEIF format kind of JPEG format on the iPhone and straight away I cannot really tell the difference between those two. The white balance is better on the Pixel this time and when we zoom in, those two images are really similar. I don't see major differences whatsoever. They do look really close. Maybe it's a bit more over sharpening on the Pixel and a bit more detail on the iPhone, but it's negligible once again. For some reason, when you use 2x camera, Pixel also records 
the photos of 48 megapixels, like 8,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels. For some reason, I don't know why it's not really possible in the real life, but it does record those photos. So here we have the 2x in 50 megapixel mode on the left side and 2x 12 megapixel HEIF on the iPhone on the right side. And I can really tell the difference straight away without even pixel peeping. And when we zoom in, it's getting even more obvious that the pixel is getting in real trouble, guys. So here we can see some weirdness in the bricks and a lot of artifacts and over sharpening effects, micro contrast added in a lot of ways. So yeah, 2x camera is better on the iPhone, at least in this mode. But we also have a 5x camera with also 50 megapixel capabilities, so let's take a look. And here is a little note for you guys. I had to take three images with the Google Pixel to get a sharp image handheld with a 5x lens. Just something to consider. If you look at this like full screen, it doesn't really have any difference. The white balance on the iPhone is closer to real life. Maybe it's a bit too green in my opinion, but all in all it's closer to what I was seeing with my eyes. And here it is cropped in. Uh, let me say that we have some kind of ghosting or chromatic aberrations on the pixel and it's not really that much resolution. I would say those two images look really similar. So the 50 megapixel mode on the pixel is not really worth it in my opinion. So here's one more example, both shot at 5x camera, 12 megapixels. And if you look at that like so, it's really, really close and similar. So when we zoom in five times, you can tell that the iPhone is getting sharper results, but let's switch to 50 megapixels on the pixel and it's not really sharper whatsoever. So I wouldn't use 50 megapixels mode, as I said before. One more shot with 12 megapixels and now let's zoom in. And in this case, I do prefer the image from the Google Pixel, no matter it's a 12 megapixel shot. So use 12 megapixel shots with 5x camera on the Pixel phone and you'll be more than fine. Google Pixel 8 Pro got a little decrease in resolution in the selfie camera, so we have 10.5 megapixel selfie camera. So here are two selfies I took. And let me say that the Google Pixel has too warm of the colors, kind of warm tint to all the picture, and the iPhone has more true to life skin tones and all in all colors. In terms of resolution, they are both really, really close. I don't see a dramatic difference in both images. I have pretty sharp like brows, um, I don't know, mustache, everything. So it's more or less comparable. Maybe Pixel has a slight edge in terms of sharpness. And guys, on both systems, you can use your 0.5x camera to get super macro shots. So let's take a look. So here we have the Pixel on the left and the iPhone on the right. iPhone has better colors, better white balance, better macro capabilities, more sharpness. And all in all, it's a better image in my opinion. But what if we want to take an image with 1x camera? What is the minimum focus and distance of the main camera 1x? So here it is. In this case, the Pixel wins. It can focus closer than the iPhone in this regard. But once again, the white balance looks much better on the iPhone on this image in particular. Now let's talk about portrait shots. As you know, guys, the iPhone can shoot portraits in 24 megapixels with the main sensor. It has 1x, 2x, and also 5x portrait modes, whereas the Pixel only has 1.5x, so it crops into the sensor, and 2x. So you have to keep that in mind, and it's only 12 megapixel. You can also adjust the background defocus on the iPhone, like after you shoot, you can even make a portrait mode afterwards if you collected the depth data, if you tapped on the screen while you were shooting. And all in all, the iPhone is much more versatile tool for taking portrait shots. So here are the portrait shots. 1.5x camera on the Pixel and 1x camera on the iPhone. It's a completely two different focal lengths, so we cannot compare them side by side, but I can definitely tell that the iPhone has some troubles with the cutout. I also do have some, you know, strings right here on the coat, and it is really bad for the portrait mode because it's struggling to kind of decide whether it's connected to my body or it's an artifact or something. So it's a real problem for it. So all in all, I would say that the Pixel does look okay and maybe even better from this distance. But now let's check the 2x portrait and the Pixel looks a bit weird in my opinion. If we zoom in, <laughs> I look so much older on the left image. And uh, the right image is also not the best one. The cutout is really far from being perfect. But all in all, the Pixel just does so much over sharpening. It looks gross in my opinion. And also, guys, you can use the 5x lens to take portraits on the iPhone and it looks really nice, except for those little dangling things. 
It does look like it's shot on a DSLR if you're not pixel peeping, and the cutout is not that bad, so all in all big thumbs up for the portrait mode with the 5x camera on the iPhone. And now guys, my favorite part, video, since I'm a videographer, so let's take a look. 0.5x camera, 4K 30 on both smartphones, and straight away I can tell that they're really similar in terms of white balance, in terms of sharpness, but the pixel has pixel binning, and that is why we see some moray and aliasing on the bridge like uh, right in the middle you can definitely see that it's like jumping all over the place and overall resolution is worse in one x camera 4k 30 and the stabilization is fine on both but the pixel has too much over sharpening you can see it on the branches and the trees in my opinion the iphone takes better footage and then pixel gave me this result also 4k 30 i've double checked it but it's super mushy, it looks like 1080p and the white balance is completely off, so the Google Pixel is not stable yet, at least with the latest firmware. It just decided to make this shitty image. I don't know why. One more issue with the Google Pixel is the 5x camera and its autofocus in video mode. You can see how autofocus tries to jump onto this wheel and it's not looking that good in my opinion. The next test is 4K60, because with most of the phones, especially with the Samsung phones, when you switch to 4K60, it's getting super bad, like 1080p upscaled and over-sharpened. In this case, it does look a bit over-sharpened, but it's not as bad as with the previous Samsung phones, like Galaxy S21 Ultra or 22 Ultra, it was really unbearable. In terms of 1x camera, in 60p, it does look okay, in my opinion, nothing too crazy, nothing bad to say actually but when it comes to 2x camera here where the problems start for the pixel we have some moray aliasing and all in all the image starts to fall apart even in good lighting conditions the 5x camera looks a bit softer to my eye and it's not in terms of over sharpening of the iphone it's a real detail on the iphone the 5x lens is much better for video shooting at least on the iphone when it comes to lower lighting scenarios, like on this subway station, we have some light reflections, as you can see on both cameras, and it's a pity that they both have it. I guess it's impossible to eliminate those. But on 0.5x camera in 4K30, look how much noise we have on the pixel on the top part of the image. It's really noisy, and it needs a lot of light. It requires a lot of light to get clean image on the pixel. As far as active stabilization mode goes, the Pixel can only do it in Full HD and you only get 1x and 2x digital crop, that's it. On the iPhone it drops to 2.8k in terms of resolution and you get all the cameras, 0.5, 1x and etc. So at 1x you can see how bad the image from the Pixel looks, I would not use this mode at all because the image gets super mushy on the Pixel. In terms of stabilization, it's more or less fine, I would say, but we have too much going on on the Pixel. It's noisy, it has moray, it has artifacts, <laughs> super poor image quality, so I would not use this mode. With the iPhone, you can even use the 5x camera with this uh, action mode and get this kind of shot, handheld walking. How does Apple even do this? So, in terms of stabilization, the iPhone gets the lead 100%. And guys, here are two selfie shots uh, side by side. On the Pixel we have the speech enhancer turned on and it's a pretty windy and loud place, as you might have guessed, near the bridge. So here are the images side by side, 4K 30 frames per second. Let's have a small walk, not really far away from my camera, not to get lost. So here's the level of stabilization, I'm just hand holding both, de both <laughs> devices and uh, this is what you can expect from those. You've heard that guys, right? So the active noise cancellation on the Google Pixel is doing some really bad stuff in my opinion. I would much prefer the iPhone sound no matter it has more background noise. Uh, maybe I can use something like voice isolation in Final Cut to fix it, but you cannot fix this for uh, sound quality from the Pixel when it's already done its job. So in my opinion, just use the regular mode without any noise cancellation, you'll get better results. In terms of time lapses, on the iPhone 15 Pro Max in the regular camera app, you are still limited to 1080p time lapses. Apple, why? <laughs> you can use the Blackmagic camera app to fix this. You can record and log in there. It's a free app. You can record the 4K time lapses with this app. It's fine. But the Google Pixel does have built in 4K time lapses, so that is why we're giving it a thumbs up. And after time lapses, I'd like to talk about slow motion capabilities. So here we have both images in 1080p, it's 120 frames per second on both cameras. And let me say, guys, that I thought that the iPhone has shitty footage in slow motion. Uh, it was grainy, over sharpened, blah, blah, blah. But no. 
Pixel. It's got the worst footage in slow motion that I've seen in like a year or so. It's, it's super bad. Pixel, you cannot give us this bad slow motion capabilities in 2023. Guys, the Sony smartphones now have 4K 120, usable 4K 120. What the hell? <laughs> Come on. In terms of cinematic mode or blur mode on the Pixel, it drops down to 1080p on the Pixel, it's still 4K on the iPhone and you can change it in post, you can fix the aperture, in this case it's f2.8, you can actually turn it completely off, you can change focus, so it's a much more versatile solution with the iPhone in this case. Now let's have a look at the image, and it's looking really bad on the Pixel, it's looking not that good on the iPhone as well, but... <laughs> Oh, oh god, <laughs> it's super bad on the Pixel, don't use this mode on the Pixel guys. So on the iPhone we can actually close down the aperture to f7.1 in post and it's getting much better, it's getting more natural blur, so I would suggest using something like f5.6 at least, maybe 7.1. And you can also use the 2x camera on the iPhone, whereas on the Pixel you are stuck to 1x camera and 1080p resolution. So the cinematic mode is a win for the iPhone once again. Also on the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, now we have the Apple Lock functionality and actually it doesn't have over sharpening and irritating tone mapping and I have a huge review of Apple Lock right here in comparison with the stock camera app without Apple Lock. So on the Pixel we only have like high dynamic range mode or HDR in HLG. So Log is a high dynamic range profile and the HLG as well, but the results are completely different, guys. So here is an image of those two side by side. Apple Log is graded really fast, like one or two clicks with a lot. And guys, the amount of over sharpening is gross on the Pixel. It's, it's not even comparable to the iPhone's footage. The iPhone looks so much more natural. The colors, the, the detail, the absence of noise, I, I was shocked how bad the Pixel looks in this mode. It, it's... Ah, come on, Pixel! What's wrong with you? I was really impressed with the photo capabilities in some cases of the Pixel, but the video... Not even close, guys. I'm upset. Now let's have a look at the skin tone. So maybe it's not the best grade that I did. Uh, it's simply Apple Log to Rec 709. Lots, it's a couple of tweaks. But the difference is huge. I look like a zombie on the left file and uh, I look more natural on the right one. The oversharpening of the HLG is super insane. I don't know about you guys, if you do consider oversharpening as detail and more sharp image, I'm sorry, it's not like so. So the real detail is here. The growth of the sharpening, unfortunately, is here. I hope that they will fix it in the future firmware, for instance, but as for now, but guys, I want to be an advocate of the Pixel because the built-in camera app is great and has a lot of customization. You can choose the resolution, you can change the white balance, the ISO, the shutter speed, you have even some peaking, also the white balance too, if I didn't say that before. So all in all, the app itself and all the settings that you can dial in into the camera app in the Pixel, it's great. But I have a question, guys. Why isn't it working like it's supposed to. Where is great video recording? Why is it that good of an app, but that bad of a result? <laughs> Please explain. Also, Pixel does have some great post-processing workflows, like erasing some object from a photo, um, even moving an object in a photo, picking the best face in the group photo, and even something in the future in terms of video uploading to a cloud, getting enhanced and getting back to your phone in a few hours. It's great, but I want the capabilities of great video and photo shooting straight out of the camera. I want to take my phone out of the pocket and hit the record button and get great results, guys. Why is it like so? I'm reviewing smartphones and comparing those for four years on YouTube, and this is the first time I'm getting this irritated and mad about a phone. I'm disappointed. Maybe it's my copy, but it has the latest firmware. I don't know what's wrong with you. Pixel. And now guys, let's get to the night shots. At least somewhere Pixel has to get better results and some points. So here it is, 0.5x camera, 12 megapixels, just straight up shot. It was took on a very sturdy tripod and three seconds timer, so there is no uh, interference with my finger when I was tapping it. So I tapped it, three seconds, took a shot. So here it is. Straight away, I can definitely tell that the image on the pixel is looking better. And when we zoom in five times, it also does look better. Then let's get a 50 megapixel image on the pixel. 
and it seems like it's doing a better job once again. So the 0.5x camera in darker conditions, thanks to the brighter aperture, by the way, is doing a better job. Yeah, it does have better resolution and noise performance, a bit over sharpened, but all in all, pretty nice. So now let's have night sight mode on, 6 seconds on Pixel and 3 seconds on the iPhone. It was just what phones allowed me to record, 3 seconds on iPhone, 6 seconds on the Pixel. And once again, the Pixel does look better in my opinion, and the overall detail is better on the Pixel. So thumbs up, Pixel, <laughs> 0.5x camera is better in low light in photo mode. Now let's take a look at 1x camera, 12 megapixel on the Pixel 8 Pro and also 1x 24 megapixel on the 15 Pro Max. Straight away I can tell that the iPhone does look better, it does look like night in my opinion and you can definitely see the difference in detail and resolution on this pole, the parking lot pole and the red car. Now let's get into 50 megapixel on the Pixel and 48 megapixel on the iPhone. Mm, let me say that the dynamic range is better on the iPhone, but all in all those two images are really comparable in terms of resolution. And the night sight or night mode, 6 seconds on the Pixel and 3 seconds on the iPhone. And uh, I can see that the Pixel did a better job in this regard. So yeah, the night sight from the tripod is better on the Pixel. But what if you want to make a night uh, shot handheld? So here is the image and I took it handheld. It was pitch black. I really couldn't see anything. Six seconds on both devices. And if we zoom in, we can see that the iPhone has retained more detail. It's less blurry on this branch. So if you want to do a handheld shot, you'd better pick the iPhone. If you want to do a tripod shot, you'd better pick the Pixel. So now we have switched to 2x camera, 12 megapixels on both cameras, and when we zoom in we can definitely tell the difference in over sharpening once again on the Pixel. Look at those leaves on the trees, guys. It's just a super over sharpened, uh, over crispened mess. I don't like it. I, I just prefer more noisy but more natural looking image. So here's the 50 megapixel mode on the Pixel and still 12 megapixel Apple Pro RAW on the iPhone and yeah we do get better results with the 50 megapixel mode but the over sharpening is still there I don't like it but okay it's more than fine then the 2x 12 megapixel night sight 6 seconds on the pixel and 6 seconds on the iPhone and god damn it what is that what's wrong with the leaves why it's so over sharpened it looks like the image was blurred super a lot and then it was denoised and then it was added a ton of sharpness over sharpening effect so it's it's looking bad guys let's check the 5x camera lens and uh, here it is 5x 12 megapixels on both over sharpening once again yes the iphone has more noise but it still has more detail and not a lot of over sharpening the 50 megapixel mode on the pixel on the other hand does give you much better results. You can see that right now we are having better image. But it's a weird suggestion to shoot in 50 megapixel with a 5x lens at night. Um, <laughs> only from the tripod and with the like clock, three seconds pause before the shoot. Whoa, it's a difficult review today. And here is the 5x 12 megapixel night mode shot, 7 seconds and 10 seconds respectively. And let me say that the Pixel doesn't look as bad, but the iPhone looks a bit more natural, at least in terms of the color of the car. And now it's time to talk about the night portraits. So 1.5x camera, 12 megapixel on the Pixel, and also 1x camera, 24 megapixel portrait mode on the iPhone. The Pixel does look over sharpened once again, the iPhone doesn't look really good on 2x as well. So all in all, both cameras struggle with the cutout, with over sharpening, with flattening the face, mm, it's bad on both, let me say. Don't shoot portraits at night, that's my best suggestion to you guys. All in all, both perform not really good. The 5x portrait isn't that bad, but still bad. And here is a night selfie shot, the pixel does look better, I think the iPhone messed up with the shutter speed and that is why I get some motion blur. Mm. It's fine, I guess, on the Pixel and with the night mode and 10 seconds exposure, I get better results with the iPhone, but the face is super flat. All in all, guys, the night selfies are also not the best option to you. But guys, if Pixel did some shots better, like 0.5x in terms of photos at night, I do agree that it did better than the iPhone. But in terms of video, let's find out. 
So here we are at 0.5x camera, 4K 30 on both cameras. We can see that the frame rate dropped to 24p, I guess, on the Pixel because it's really choppy. On the iPhone, we're still remaining 30 FPS. And the image is so noisy on the Pixel, it's super noise reduced and over sharpened on top. So the 0.5x camera, even on the iPhone, it's not the best camera in the world. And I don't suggest using it ever at night but it's still better than the Pixel. Look at this motion blur on the Pixel. We still get this drop in frames to 24p. And even with 1x camera, we get worse results on the Pixel because it's a better sensor, but still it's not as good as the iPhone. Look at this dancing noise patterns and artifacts and noise reduction. And all in all, it's, <laughs> it's bad, guys. <laughs> I'm not sure about the synonyms of the word bad. It's awful. It's terrible. I don't know, don't use this phone in video mode, especially in 60 frames per second. Look at this, guys, look at this. It's 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 like we're shooting at 100,000 ISO, then going through noise reduction and then over sharpening it. 60 FPS is useless, completely useless on the Pixel. It's, it's garbage, <laughs> it's, it's just garbage. And it's with one X lens with the best sensor on the iPhone, it's it's not bad. I mean, it is bad, but it's not as bad. The 2x camera, immediately I can see the difference. Once again, over sharpened image on the Pixel. Once again, too much noise reduction going on. Once again, we have chroma uh, noise. We have different levels of noise and a lot of noise reduction. Just leave it alone. Let it be grainy. Let it be, I don't know, filmic-like, whatever. But don't do this. It, it's not good. So here we have the 5X camera and it's looking a bit better in my opinion than the 2X. At least we do see some detail and a bit less over sharpening and noise reduction. But when we zoom in, once again, the iPhone is looking a ton better, a ton. Much more detail, much less noise. We do have some noise reduction, of course, but still it's a lot, a lot better than the Pixel. So Pixel at night isn't the best option, that's for sure. And it was a static shot on a tripod. What happens when we add motion to it? Let's take a look. So here we are, 0.5x camera, 4K 30, and on the Pixel, the image does look super bad. The iPhone is not the superstar as well, but the Pixel is showing very bad results, guys. And I see the frame drops, the tree is not green anymore, the flare is more or less comparable, but I can see a bigger source of light on the Pixel, so the flare performance is actually better on the iPhone, in my opinion. We have crushed details on the Pixel, and when we start to go and move, we see a ton of ghosting and artifacts of the stabilization on the Pixel, and the sky is simply jumping all over the place. So 0.5x camera is a no-go for the Pixel, 100%. My neighbors are doing some drilling stuff. One X camera is not that bad on Pixel as well, but the frame drops are visible in my opinion. And also I can definitely tell that the iPhone is still better in terms of color reproduction and in terms of detail levels and less over sharpening as well. The flare, the little like this irritating little flare is present on the Pixel as well as the iPhone. So both phones are struggling with it and it's not a pain of the iPhone only, it's in all the smartphones. So now let's try to walk with both cameras. We see the artifacts of stabilization on both of those, but on the Pixel we see more of them. So let's try to go faster a little bit and I see a lot of light leaks and reflections of the light poles. All in all, it's not bad, but the iPhone does retain better dynamic range in this part of the image as well. So now let's have a look at the uh, 2x camera, just out of curiosity, it's looking pretty bad on the Pixel, not really better on the iPhone to be honest, and I would not suggest using 2x camera at night ever. But we have better dynamic range on the iPhone as you can see from those windows. In terms of reflections, it's more or less the same, and in terms of flare performance overall, Mm, okay, the green is much better on the iPhone and the shadows are really much cleaner on the iPhone. And here's the 5X camera on the Pixel. Look at those flares and the noise performance. Wow, that's bad, guys. And here it is with the iPhone. It's not the best image I've seen, but it's much better than the Pixel. But anyway, 5X camera is a no-go um, in terms of night shooting. Here's the Pixel with 5X and here is the iPhone with 5X. Also, Pretty boring image, do not use 5x at night, 
that's the point of, of, of this case. And if you are trying to walk with 5X, both on the Pixel and on the iPhone, we get some artifacts of stabilization and a lot of light leaks, but less light leaks on the iPhone, obviously. And in terms of blur mode or cinematic mode, 1X camera, 1080p on the Pixel, 4K on the iPhone, but on the iPhone we don't get any background blur, so it simply didn't turn on. So I guess the cinematic mode is a no-go for both at night, because on the Pixel we have a really grainy and noisy and soft and over-sharpened image, and on the iPhone it simply doesn't work. And right now, guys, I'm using the selfie camera at night with a pretty bright um, pole, light pole right here, so here it is. This light pole is oh, actually the light leaks on the iPhone seem to be better, but the contrast is getting really low. But the image is really, is really really getting super noisy on the Pixel, on the sky at least, and on the iPhone it's mushy, less detail. But all in all, I don't know. I wouldn't use selfie camera at night anyway. And guys, right now you are looking at the image recorded in 4K 30 with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And with its internal microphone, I'm like one meter away, and this room is not acoustically treated whatsoever. And right now we are looking at Pixel 8 Pro image quality, 4K 30, also built-in microphone, the same distance, more, more or less. And uh, this is how it looks, no corrections, auto white balance, auto everything, so what do you think? But also on the iPhone we can record in Apple Log and hear how it looks graded. And this is how it compares to Pixel 8 Pro. So how do you like the footage? Is Apple Lock giving you better results in terms of skin tones and all that, right? <laughs> Little kitty cats. So what do you think, guys? To be honest, I'm really disappointed with the Pixel 8 Pro. Uh, in photo mode, in 50 megapixel, on the ultra-wide camera, it is better than the iPhone in some cases, especially at night uh, with 0.5x camera, but all in all, as a full package, the iPhone is much more versatile in terms of action mode, cinematic mode, video, video in 60p, video in low light, and all in all, in terms of white balance, it's like back and forth in terms of uh, color correction of the images and post-processing, it's back and forth, it's too much over-sharpening on the pixel all the time, and I hate it. And I would prefer the iPhone. What do you think? Please share your thoughts down in the comment section below. I really do appreciate it. And if you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notifications bell. And here is a video for you to watch next. It's about the Apple Log and how it's getting much, much better. And you get a lot better images with your iPhone. And I think it's the best feature. I mean, the Apple Log in like five years on the smartphones. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye.